Hey guys, it's Tiamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back. Today we're going to be completing our conversation on forgiveness. This has been a topic that a lot of you have enjoyed talking about. You've, you've sent me emails and text messages and tweets and, you know, YouTube messages explaining kind of your emotions on the issue and your thoughts and your beliefs and your religious beliefs and your cultural beliefs and you know, I, I think it's wonderful. I think this is the kind of conversation that we need when we're talking about trauma, abuse, family, that kind of thing. So in today's video, I want to point out the neuroanatomy of forgiveness. There's actually some neurological components to that. And I also want to point out a new term that we haven't quite talked about, which is trait forgiveness. So thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed and for those who are new. I encourage you to hit the subscribe button right over here so that you can stick around with us and learn and grow and, you know, participate in our validating and educational community. The benefits for you in today's video is that I want to point out what's called trait forgiveness. And then I want to also point out some brain regions and some benefits to forgiving. All right. So what is the neuroanatomy? of forgiveness. Well, you know, there have been what's called fMRIs done on individuals and that's a functional magnetic resonance imaging, okay? So I'm going to put it over here for you. The fMRIs were done on a series of of patients, individuals, clients who had volunteered for a study to examine and look at the the neurobiological components of the act of forgiveness and what was found and i'm going to put the study down in the des the description box below for you but what was found is that there were actually neurochemical and neurological changes happening in the brain when a person engaged in forgiving you know, parts of the brain that lit up included the um, emotional centers of the brain. So the limbic system and the amygdala, right? The dorsal lateral cortex. I'm going to put that over here for you so that you know what that is. And a little bit of, of you know, what that does in the act of forgiveness. I'm going to put that in the description box for you below as well. Um, there were also areas of the brain uh, that are involved in what I've discussed on this channel known as TOM, theory of mind. That's the ability to be empathetic towards other people, T-O-M. So uh, that neural network in the brain uh, was involved in the act of forgiving. So kind of having that empathy and that theory of mind and being able to put yourself in the shoes of other people. The other part of the brain uh, that was involved in the act of forgiveness was uh, the affective and the cognitive components of the brain, right? So the cerebral cortex and the amygdala, the limbic system, right? The affective, A-F-F-E-C-T-I-V-E, -E, the affective or emotional parts of the brain were also involved in forgiveness. I'm also going to post a video uh, in the comment that I like to pin to my comment section. I'm going to post a video down below for you so that you can click on that and kind of get a little bit more information about the neurobiology of forgiveness and what that looks like. Okay, so there's a neurological and a neurobiological component to forgiveness. Parts of your brain are activated when you engage in the act of forgiveness. Why? Because we're basically made up of our brains, right? So everything we do connects back to neurobiology. And when you forgive, you're actually doing something very smart and important to your health. Individuals, studies have shown that individuals who have not forgiven or who hasn't resolved um, guilt and feelings of shame and feelings of anger and hurt and resentment, they haven't resolved that. Studies suggest that it increases your chances of having health conditions like diabetes and cardiovascular disease, uh, heart attacks, stroke, right? Um, and even chronic migraine headaches. So there's a lot of science that backs up the art of forgiveness. I think it's easy to kind of diminish or minimize the beneficial components to forgiveness because it's so hard psychologically and emotionally to forgive. And when you're you're faced with, you know, either living your life to the fullest, right, kind of fearing what that might look like, 
if you forgave the person, when you're living based on those two things, so living your life to the fullest and, and kind of having to forgive versus not forgiving and having a heart condition or diabetes or chronic migraine headaches or whatever, even mental illness, when you're staring at those two roads, right, that fork in the road, uh, it really is difficult to determine which way you want to go, right? Do you want to go this way and forgive the person and feel like you are you know, giving in or becoming a victim or you're kind of being weak as we talked about in this video up here? Or are you going to go this way where you're going to have heart conditions and maybe migraine headaches and other issues that are the result of not rectifying a situation within yourself? So that's something to think about. That's a fork in the road. Do I want to forgive and go with the behaviors and the actions of forgiving or do I want to go over here and suffer for the rest of my life because I refuse to forgive so that's something to think about there okay so you know I want you to keep that in mind as you move forward after the series this week that you know unforgiveness really does erode your health it also erodes your neurobiological and neurophysiological uh, components of your body as well so keep that in mind all right so which trait forgiveness well I you know I always felt that my grandmother had a tendency to forgive a lot easier than me um, I'm very forgiving and very compassionate and very loving but once you've shown me completely who you are and it's a dark who you are a dark person um, I, I don't want any I don't want any pieces of you you know um, because my intent in the world is to contribute in a positive way and to live peacefully with my brothers and sisters and not create drama and create a firestorm. So because of that, I don't want any pieces of you. Um, and so I tend to avoid people like that or I push them out of my life and shut the door. I don't even give them, you know, the room to even talk me into letting them back into my life after they've, you know, really hurt me. Okay. Um, so because of that, and I'm growing through that, but because of that, I've always thought my grandmother was a lot easier at forgiving and she really was, uh, she can forgive you just like that. And I'm like, what are you on? You know? Okay. But, um, there's one thing known as trait forgiveness, and that's an individual who is kind of prone to forgiveness. They can get hurt a million times, a thousand times, and they can still forgive you. Um, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what they do. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, how long you haven't spoken to the person. People who are prone to forgiveness, trait forgiveness, people who have this kind of predisposition to forgive, you know, they, they kind of live a lot happier and better than the rest of us because they don't hold on to things as tightly as maybe we do, right? If you're a grudge holder, you're going to be miserable and irritable and, you know, have tension in your body and not be able to rest or sleep or really move forward in your life. And you may be wondering, why am I stuck and I'm motivated and moody and irritable and tearful and ugh, right? And that's because because you're not focusing on the issue that's right there staring you in the face, right? The elephant in the room is that you need to, you know, clear all the cobwebs and restart in a positive way. Individuals who don't, individuals who do have that capability uh, are prone to forgive, right? They don't feel that way because somebody can wrong them and they forgive you in two seconds. Um, are those individuals the way that we need to be? Uh, should we model after them? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Mm, I don't know about that. I think sometimes if you are prone to forgive too easily, you can be very naive and very vulnerable. Um, so you really do, I think, have to have a balanced perspective when it comes to forgiveness. I'm hoping that you guys will take uh, this series this week and really think about it. Um, I encourage your comments in the comment section below. I also encourage further topics involving forgiveness. So if you have like a, a, a different component of this topic that you want me to focus on, let me know in the comment section below and I'll go ahead and post that video. But um, I hope that you were able to kind of process this series and get something from it, gain some value and kind of take it with you on your journey of life. Um, maybe when you come to a situation, if you haven't already, where you're faced with forgiving or holding a grudge, you'll choose forgiveness. And hopefully it's because we've talked about it on this channel and you have a little bit more of a robust understanding of kind of the topic.
itself. It's a huge topic, so I could focus on this for four weeks and we would never get bored. Um, but we're going to end it here. And we're going to start a brand new topic next week. Holidays are coming up. And so not only are we grappling with forgiving people who have backstab us and hurt us, but we're also grappling with, should I even spend the holidays with you? So um, I'll be bringing up some topics. I'll also be also will be pulling up some topics from the past as well uh, on this on this channel this month. All right, guys, I'll talk to you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.